Welcome to the Retirement Daily Learning Center on the Street. Our presentation today is Aging in Place. And our guest speaker is Annalie Kruger, founder and president of CareRight and co-founder of Plan for Life Now. So welcome to the Learning Center, Annalie. Good morning. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you here, and it will be a pleasure to have you walk us through the first of a three-part series on aging and care issues. Very good. Thank you so much for having me on your webinar today. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Anna Lee Kruger. I'm the owner of Care Right Incorporated and co-founder of Plan for Life Now. Just to give you a little bit about who your presenter is today, I with Care Right Incorporated, I work with families all across the country in developing customized aging plans. Who typically reaches out to Care Right are the, the sons and daughters of aging loved ones who are feeling overwhelmed, burned out, apprehensive about becoming a caregiver, or they're already overwhelmed with becoming a caregiver to aging parents or aging loved ones. And they're realizing that what they're doing is not emotionally healthy for them. It's not financially healthy for them. It's not physically healthy, and it's causing some disruption in their family relationships at home, disruption in their family relationships with siblings, and certainly some disruption and resentment towards their aging parents. So, so with Care Right, we work with families all across the country. So I thought what we would do, I teamed up with Bob here, and we're going to do a three-part series just to help educate consumers and advisors about what is this whole long-term care thing? What does aging in place look like? What's an aging plan? What is caregiving? And how can we make sure that as a family that we have everything that we need to in order and that if or when there's when there's an issue with our with our aging parents, we actually have a plan in place and a strategy in place, and we're making informed decisions. This first part series, we decided to focus on what is aging in place, and the reason why we talk about aging in place is because we know the statistics the statistics are there. Most seniors want to age in place at home. I've been working with families for over 30 years, facilitating their family meetings, finding out what are your goals as you age. Adult kids, what are your goals for your aging parents? And in the 30 years, which is thousands of families that I've worked with, moms and dads say the exact two goals every single time. Goal number one is I want to age in place at home. I want to stay at home until I die or until I can't stay at home anymore. The second goal that moms and dads always say is, and I don't want to be a burden on my kids. But guess who? <laughs> guess who is calling Care Right for help with what do we do with mom and dad now? because they're burned out. It's the adult kids. So statistically, 87% of adult kids over the age of 65 or adults age over 65 want to stay in their current home. 71% of people over from 50 to 64 want to age in place. So the population is rising. We call it in healthcare, we call it the silver tsunami. All of the baby boomers are aging and and so boomers start turning 65. The last wave of boomers is, is around 2030. We know that the life expectancy for women is 81 years and men is 76 years. But we also know that there's people that are outliers and they're, you know, in their 90s and we have 100 year old seniors as well. We also know that our healthcare system is already completely overwhelmed and ill-prepared, I've been preaching this from the mountains, um, overwhelmed and completely ill-prepared for the volume of, of patients that are coming their way. We see this already, you know, with a pandemic that kind of shed the light on how ill-prepared our healthcare system is and our long-term care system. So even in this day and age, you might have to wait months to be able to get into certain specialists like a cardiologist or a neurologist, or you, know, you might have to wait weeks or months to get in to see a, a doctor. So we're already seeing this and we've been seeing this for, for decades, but now there's, there's more light that's been shed on this problem since the pandemic. 
So when we look at the pros of aging at home, like what's the value or what are the perks of aging in place at home? They're pretty, you know, they're pretty common sense. In your own home, you have your own independence. Um, you can come and go as you please. You can wake up whenever you want to. You can follow your own routine, spend the day how you want to. Um, you have the flexibility in your own schedule. You know, in a care community, they're like, oh, it's time for breakfast. And oh, now it's time for therapy. And oh, it's time to go to bingo. You know, you you, you have some say in your structure in, in a care community, but at home, you've, you've, you can do kind of whatever you want to because there's, there's no rules. <laughs> You also tend to obviously have more privacy when you stay at home because it's your house. In a care community, you're, you may have a roommate, depending on what type of care that you need if you move into a nursing home. <clears throat> so you've got a lot more privacy at home. You also are surrounded by a lifetime of memories, which can be really helpful and really therapeutic because you all of your memories, your lifetime is right around you. You also have access to your family whenever you want to. There's no visiting hours at home. Um, you can also bring care into your home. So when the time comes that you're starting to have trouble cooking or driving or running errands, or you don't have the energy to clean your house, we can bring all sorts of supports into your home to help you age in place at home and be more successful. <clears throat> but all of those services also come with a price tag. So we'll talk about that too. And I always say this literally every day, aging at place and aging and caregiving can be successful if there is an aging plan. We spend our whole lives planning for certain things. What are, what's our career? What college are we gonna go to? What do we need to get that kind of job? What kind of person do we need to marry the kind of person that we want? When are we going to retire? If we're going to travel, we plan. So we spend our whole life planning. So why wouldn't we plan for the most vulnerable years of ourselves, which is our aging loved ones or for our aging parents? The cons of aging at home that people don't think about, and this is what we go through with our clients on a one-to-one on -one basis, but what they don't think about because they don't know what they don't know is there can also be social isolation and loneliness. Why is that? Well, because they are at home by themselves. And so while they may not have their structure and routine that you would get in a care community, people at home, especially when they're frail elderly, they tend to maybe just sit in their recliner. The television becomes their, their socialization and we know that the only way to use 100% of your brain for communication is face-to-face -face communication. So when, when, they're, they're, when they're staying at home and they're all by themselves, or maybe mom and dad refuse to bring in care, or they think that they can manage on their own, they can get really isolated. And that's when we start to see all these other problems unravel, which means anxiety, depression, and memory issues. If they don't have enough supports and care coming into the care into the home, there's going to be a lot of missed um, missed issues that people don't know about. You know, falls, weight loss, not taking their medications properly, memory impairment, missing their doctor's appointments. So that's why we want to make sure that if mom and dad are going to age in place at home that there's enough supports in place to help make sure that they're successful. Because when I ask adult kids, what are your goals for your parents? It's always a variation of the same four things. We want our parents to be happy. We want our parents to be safe. We want our parents to have the best quality of life possible. And we want our parents to have the best quality of care possible. So the only way to do that is to make sure that we have enough supports in place for everybody. The house size and just the general upkeep can also get overwhelming. So think about like if your mom was always this tidy housekeeper, but now she's got mobility issues or she's got shortness of breath and she just doesn't have the energy and stamina to be able to clean her house. Now she's just sitting in her house thinking, oh my gosh, this house used to be so clean and, and it can get really overwhelming. We start to see, you know, mail piling up or the house just not being kept up like it used to. Or if your dad was always the one to like make sure that the windows got caulked or, you know, the carpet got cleaned and all those kind of things. And now he's not 
able to do those things anymore, the house can get really overwhelming and just maintaining it. It's also very costly. So that's that's a con of aging in place at home. Safety and oversight. Again, too many of our seniors are what we call a self-neglect case because they're not eating well. They're not taking their medications. They may not be getting to their doctor's appointment. Um, so they're falling. They're having weight loss. They're having infections happen. And no one is knowing it because they're home by themselves. So that's why it's really important if if the goal is to age in place at home, we have to have some really frank conversations about what that really looks like and the cost of what this is so that you can actually make informed decisions. We talked about self-neglect already. If there's not enough care oversight in place, that's why when we see seniors moving into a care community like an assisted living, they thrive, they perk up. Why is that? Because they get three meals a day. They get their medications administered by someone who makes sure that they have their medications. Um, they have socialization, they have activities. They don't have the worries of, oh, my house is getting you know cluttered or I can't get to my doctor's appointments. All of that is already like part of moving into a care community. So we see, we actually see people tend to thrive when they get into the care community because they have finally the level of care and the level of support that they need to be successful. Expensive, um, if you have to bring in home care, I have clients paying 20 to $30,000 a month in home care. The reason is because there's a huge assumption with consumers that Medicare pays for all things aging and it just does not. And so, when if you're trying to put your own plan in place for parents or for yourselves and you're making decisions off of wrong information like medicare paying for everything you're not going to put the right plan together cuz you're 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 not making a plan out of facts or off of facts so when we talk about it expensive it's expensive to bring in home care. It could be $30 to $60 an hour for home care companies. And if your parents need two caregivers because dad is six foot four, they're not going to just send one, one companion to the house. He might need two. Or if your parent has dementia, they may say the only way we can serve you as a client is if you agree that two companions are going to be coming to the house because of paranoia and behaviors associated with dementia. So that's why it can get really expensive. And then if the time comes that you need a nurse to come out and set up medications, or you need a patient advocate, you know, to make sure that they're getting taken care of properly, and you need housekeepers, all of that just, you know, that adds up. And that's where that 20 to 30, sometimes $40,000 a month in, in care, it costs to age in place at home. So when people say age in place at home, we really need to unpack that. <laughs> and that's why we're doing this webinar today. Um, reliance on home care can be a challenge. Um, you know, the it's it can be difficult finding the right type of companions or companions that will show up for their shift. And so if the goal is to age in place at home and dad is at, you know, dad's at home and he's on three liters of oxygen and he, he doesn't have the mobility to be able to get up to go to the bathroom on his own. And that, that caregiver does not show up for her 12 hour shift. What's dad supposed to do? He's going to fall or he's not going to eat or he's not going to be able to get up to go to the bathroom. So he's going to have accidents in his chair. So that's that's the challenge of aging at home is if you can find the right companions and the right care team, that's great. But that can be challenging. Not everybody that works in home care is, you know, necessarily properly trained or or supervised as much as you would want them to be. So we also will talk about in the next slide, um, like using technology to help you age, age at home with um, some, some level of certainty. Dementia progression and safety. Every single day I'm meeting with families who are blindsided because they're like, oh, I didn't realize dad was so demented. And now that mom passed away, we just didn't realize how much she had to do for him. And now, now we realize dad's not safe at home and how much care that mom really had to provide for him. So when you don't have enough supports in place at home, all of these diseases that, that are progressive um, can kind of, you can 
they can slip through the cracks because a lot of adult kids don't understand what their what their parents have for a diagnosis. And so if your parent has dementia, just know that that's a progressive disease. You know, they're going to get worse. They're going to need 24 seven care. If your parent has, or if you have Parkinson's disease, you should expect falls and Parkinson's is a dementing illness or it can be a dementing illness. So the more that families can understand the disease that they have, then we can, then we can put a proper plan in place. Parents not doing well at home as the adult kids would like to think literally every day I'm meeting with adult kids who are just blindsided that dad is more demented than they thought, or we didn't realize mom was falling down all the time. So, so your parents may not be doing as well at home as you would like to think. We know that the red flags of, you know, things not going well, falls, poor nutrition, weight loss, safety, and they're at a high risk of getting scammed if there's not enough um, supports in place at home. Considerations that you'll want to think about are uh, the decisions that you make today will impact your future care options. What I mean by that is so many people, they're, they're just looking at today, they're not looking down the road and you have to look down the road in any kind of big decision in life. So, so many people are like, okay, dad and mom want to age in place at home. Or I, you know, if I'm the Ethel and the Marvin, I want to age in place at home no matter what. Okay, well, if you only have a million dollars or even less than a million dollars and you're shelling out 30 grand a month in home care, that, that money is going to get eaten up. And so what happens a lot of times that I see with my clients is, well, you know, we try to honor mom and dad's wishes of aging in place at home, but now we're missing work and we have to fly to Arizona from Ohio every two weeks. And that airfare is like a thousand dollars every time that, you know, dad falls and we get the phone call that we have to be at the hospital and it gets really expensive. And I just don't know how we're going to be able to keep honoring their wish of aging in place at home. Because now my boss is on my on my tail about you're never here anymore, you're not engaged. So you can see how all of this can be really complicated for adult kids to try to honor that wish. And so what happens is moms and dads will spend so much money on home care trying to age in place at home, but then if they outlive their money, then what they've done is jeopardized what future care they would qualify for. And now they're only probably gonna qualify for a Medicaid nursing home and those beds are really hard to find and what if you have two aging parents and now they have no money and they don't qualify to get into a care facility they could end up they will likely end up separated mom in one facility dad in another facility because the likelihood of a nursing home having two open beds for someone on medicaid is very nil um the other thing that people don't always think about is you have to, or your parents have to financially qualify to get into these different care, care homes, independent living, assisted living, memory care, and nursing home. So each facility has their expectations of what you have to meet to be able to move in there. So you have to financially qualify. Some of these care communities, you have to have three to five years of private pay, ability to pay on your own before you can go on Medicaid. But you also have to physically qualify. And we'll talk about this in more detail in another webinar, but just to give you some sense of this, um, your, you or your parents also have to physically qualify to get into these care communities. So you can't be too sick or you can't be too frail to still be able to qualify to move into assisted living. So what happens is they've either used up all their money on home care. So now they only financially qualify to get into a nursing home. Or they've waited so long that now they, they've lost their mobility, they can't stand on their own, or they have pressure sores, or they're just not, they're not physically healthy enough to qualify to get into assisted living level of care. So again, they're leaving home to go into a nursing home. So there's a lot of things that, that families need to know that they usually don't know. And so they're not making the wisest decisions because they don't know what they don't know. Um, aging at home costs relative to care community requirement costs. We work with our families on that. You know, what, what kind of money do you have? This is the kind of home care that it's going to cost or the type of care that you can get at home, but this is the price tag that's going to go along with that. 
This is, you know, when we do a care matrix for families, here are different care communities. Here's how much they charge for an entrance fee. They have a $500,000 entrance fee, plus you still have to pay room and board on top of that. So we do that cost comparison for families so that you, so that you can all make informed decisions. Um, again, seniors spending their nest egg on home care may not, may prevent them from financially qualifying to get into a care community. And again, we'll talk about the differences in all these different care communities at an, in another webinar. Seniors wanting to age at home and they wait too long and now they don't qualify physically or financially or cognitively for assisted living. Again, um, we'll break that down in another webinar. And again, what if your parents or what if you, if you are Ethel and Marvin, what if you, what if you require two different levels of care and now you can't afford to get into the same care facility? Um, because they don't have an opening. So we're going to be talking about what is aging planning and, and how to safeguard yourselves or your aging loved ones so that you all can have the best possible aging and caregiving journey. So there are tons, like that's what's so exciting about in our current day and age. There are so many more opportunities for seniors and adults with disabilities to be able to age at home than we had even 10 years ago because technology is just coming out of the coming out of the woodwork. Um, but the first thing that we all have to overcome is that huge layer of denial that that it seems that there's a lot of families that have that. Again, adult kids assuming that their parents are doing better at home than they really are. And then when they come home once a year or whatever, and they, they visit their parents, they're like, oh my gosh, dad just looks terrible. He's lost weight. The house is a mess. He's got mail piled up, all these kind of red flags that they, they just didn't think that were issues until they saw it for themselves. But also for our aging parents, we have to over, you know, we need them to overcome some of that denial of, of course, I'm doing OK at home. Well, mom, you keep falling or you've lost 12 pounds in the last month or you have another urinary tract infection or you got into another car accident. Those are all red flags that things are not going well at home and they're not going to magically get better. Um, but there's home care, you know, in in most areas, you know, unless you're in a very rural area, but home care. Um, so you can get physical therapy, nurses, you can get all sorts of services that, um, you know, can help you age in place at home. Mm. Oops, sorry about that. All right. So there's home care, so you can get physical therapy nurses to come into the home, and um, some of those can be billed to Medicare, um, but some of them may be out of out of pocket cost as well. Companion care is when you have a companion that's coming out to help you with bathing, dressing, grooming, walking, exercising, driving, getting you to your doctor's appointment. So that's called companion care. Um, technology, there's so much technology. Like you can use cameras at home if you're trying to stay at home or you have aging parents at home. You can put cameras in. You have to talk about it, of course, with them at first, um, but see if they're comfortable with having cameras so that if you're not down the street from them and you know, you can always just check in and make sure that they are okay. I do that every night with my dad. He's in Iowa, I'm in Florida, just in the middle of the night, I, I check in on him to make sure that he's okay, that he didn't fall trying to go to the bathroom and stuff like that, because then I can send help faster. Um, so there's different cameras you can implement um, in the main areas of your apartment if you're like in an assisted living or if you're at home. There's different apps. So like we also, I like to use um, Life 360. So I can see like where dad is at, like where is he driving? That way, if he has car trouble, anything like that. Um, so Life360 is a really good app, different cameras, um, different exercise apps, you know, to make sure that mom and dad are still moving around and getting some sort of exercise and not just sitting there. Um, there's different fall, you know, back in the day, all we had was lifeline pendants with a fall pendant or the fall button. But now there's all these watches that can be fall alerts and they can check your oxygen levels and all those kind of things. So there's all sorts of technology that we can leverage to help people age in place at home more safely. 
There's care oversight, care coordination, care management, and advocacy. Seniors need all of those. They need the care oversight to make sure that we are troubleshooting issues that can prevent them from having to go to the hospital or prematurely going into a nursing home. But again, we've got to have that care oversight just to make sure that they're doing okay or that you're doing okay at home. Care coordination is huge because if you can't do the doctor appointment scheduling and scheduling therapy and blood draws and all that kind of stuff, that ends up being a part-time and sometimes a full-time job because then you also have to confer with the insurance companies and all that kind of stuff. So the care coordination, a lot of adults, a, a, a lot of adult kids end up doing the care coordination nation and they're like, oh, it's taking like 20 hours a week because mom and dad have like eight doctor's appointments every month. And so those are stressors to adult kids because all of those phone calls have to be made during normal business hours. Well, they can't just keep stepping away from work to do all this care oversight, care coordination. It gets too overwhelming. So that's why, you know, that's why we do this and other companies do that too. The care management and advocacy, you would hope that that because you're paying healthcare workers literally thousands of dollars a month that they are doing what they should be doing, but that's not always the case. But also um, it does take a team of professionals to manage elderly parents to make sure that, that the care is the right type of care and that they're getting properly taken care of. We find out what is working well at home, and these are things that you want to have as family meetings, which we'll also talk about in another in another webinar. But you know, just gauge things. What is working well at home? What's not working well at home? What are the red flags that you're seeing, like the weight loss, the falls, hospital trips, ER visits, dents in the car, the house not being maintained, stacks of mail indicate that your parent is not able to manage their own mail and their own bills anymore. So these are these are um, really important takeaways for you and your family. So again, aging in place um, and, and aging and caregiving can be a positive experience if people have an aging plan. We want to make sure that families are communicating effectively so that there isn't misinformation or miscommunication or, yeah, you know, dad was in the hospital three weeks ago. Well, how come you not, you didn't tell me that sooner? You know, so let's, let's really get on the same page as a family and, and improve our communication. Um, understanding the healthcare jargon is going to be really helpful because once you enter the healthcare industry, you're going to hear all sorts of words and acronyms that you're going to just be like, what? And your head is going to spin. And so we teach families about the jargon that they're going to need to know so that, again, you can be an informed decision maker. Families need to, I truly don't, families need to understand the disease that your loved one has. So many of our families come to us and they're like, well, Dad has dementia, so if it gets worse, when they say that, that tells me that they that they don't understand the disease. Dementia is going to get worse. It's a brain disease. Their brain is shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. So that's why you're seeing the emotional changes, the physical changes, the safety awareness changes in your loved one. So the more that we can help under, help our families understand the diseases that their loved ones have, the more you can make informed decisions. It's no different than if, if parents who have special needs children, when they get that diagnosis that their child has whatever, they research it in and out so that they know exactly what they're dealing with. But we need to do the same thing with our aging parents. I had another family um, a few weeks ago that their mom has had Parkinson's disease for five years and the adult kids didn't realize that that was a progressive disease and they didn't know that that was also a dementing illness because they're like, oh yeah, she's she doesn't remember like she used to. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of shame on the healthcare industry because, you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, well, your loved one has this diagnosis, dementia, good luck with it, you know, and that's why we do what we do, because that way these families don't keep falling through the cracks, and they can actually have more successful outcomes. And it's also important, like I've shared throughout this webinar, that you understand the cost of care, that Medicare is not going to pay for things. So that's why you know, we look at, do you have long-term care insurance? Do you have a reverse mortgage? You know, how, a VA benefits. How are you going to pay for the care? Because this is the type of care you're going to need, or this is the type of care you need now. How are you going to pay for it? 
because that's that's going to dictate where you live and what kind of care that you get. Um, so it's really important to understand what are the differences in types of care, how much does it cost, and what is that going to mean? And if mom and dad want to age in place at home, what's going to be our financial threshold of, okay, we'll spend this much money on aging in place at home, but we still need to have a plan B because at some point you may realize that staying at home is, is just simply not safe or it's not affordable or manageable. And then just being aware of the different techniques and technology and solutions that are out there to help age at home. Um, again, that's what we do with our clients when we're putting together their aging plan or their crisis management plan is bringing in all these different types of solutions so that families can get their lives back on track. The caregivers can get their lives and their careers and their relationships back on track. And then the care matrix, um, it's, it's so important to have that plan B because even though moms and dads want to age in place at home, assisted living centers, memory care facilities, and nursing homes are full of people who also wanted to age in place at home. And it's just not always feasible, safe, or manageable. So those are different types of scenarios of you know, what is what is aging in place at home really look like? What are the pros? What are the cons? The other thing I wanted to share before we close for the day is my clients who have chosen to stay at home and we do their care advocacy, their care coordination and check in with them to make sure that they're doing all right. Um, the the complaints that that in the last 30 years that my clients have shared um, about aging in place at home is the house gets overwhelming. Um, they can't manage the house like they used to, and that's stressful, or maybe the husband died and he took care of all the house stuff. And now the remaining wife is like, oh, I, I don't even know who to call if the toilet runs over, you know? So there's that anxiety about staying at home, but also just not only the cost of care, but just the reliability of home care workers. And then a lot of these home care workers, I'm not bashing them. I'm just educating you that that, um, you know, they some of them might not have the critical thinking skills. So if the toilet is running over, they don't know to turn the water off at the toilet. So, so you really need to orient the home care workers to your house and to your preferences. Other complaints that my clients that are choosing to stay at home, some of their care workers don't speak the language that the that the client speaks. And so they're literally doing their 10 or 12 hour shift using an app, like an English translation app. So to stay at home, you're gonna have to really lower your expectations. Um, if you're choosing to stay at home, you have to really lower your expectations and be willing to compromise because there's gonna be a lot of traffic coming in and out of the house, which is another complaint of clients that are choosing to stay at home. And they don't feel like they want a babysitter all the time. But if you need help in the shower, in the bathroom and preventing falls, you need to have somebody with you all the time. So so the goal of the webinar is just to give you some food for thought, um, give you some you know, inside information about you know, what that really does look like to age in place at home. So again, the whole goal is to educate you so that you can make informed decisions. If any of these topics that we talked about today, if you find that you're a family caregiver or you're taking care of a spouse and you're like, you know, this kind of hit home for me, you know, we offer a complimentary consult um, so you can capture that information off of this last slide. If this is something that you want to explore more and learn more about, you can certainly do so. But I really want to thank you for your time today. Um, hopefully you had some good nuggets of information and learned a few things that maybe you didn't know an hour ago. So thank you for your time today. So Annalie, that was a great presentation. If you've got time, I've got a few follow-up questions for you. Sure. So um, a couple things. One is I've uh, recently learned that uh, social, social isolation, loneliness is the near equivalent of smoking three packs a day. So this is a very serious issue for folks who are maybe uh, aging in place, maybe don't have transportation um, uh, available to them, may have long distance caregivers, may have few if any friends left in their community. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. That's actually one of the reasons why aging in place at home isn't, isn't always effective because if mom and dad don't allow caregivers to come in because they don't want a babysitter, those are the words that they say, <laughs> 
then they're kind of setting themselves up to fail because they're not going to have, they're not going to be um, socialized. They're going to be sitting in a recliner watching TV. And then that's when we start seeing more depression, mental, their mental well being slips and they're not being cognitively challenged. So, so that's why it's so important that, you know, if, if the goal is to age in place at home, let's bring in all these different services. And yes, it's going to cost money, but that's why we do these, these webinars to educate you as a consumer and, you know, okay, so here's the budget. What can we afford? What, how can we get the biggest bang for our buck? So maybe it's leveraging adult daycare instead of bringing in home care, cause that's more affordable and they have activities that they can go to all day long. You have to get them there, but you can hire someone to drive them, right? If they're willing to go, but at least it's more affordable. They're around more than one person. The downside, in my opinion, the downside of aging in place at home is if you do have a companion, that's great. But what happens when they when they develop that really good bond because they with the right caregiver, they will. And then that caregiver quits or goes on maternity leave or whatever, then you have to start all over. But you're still only having access to that one companion or maybe two or three companions if it's a full time home care situation. But but the more that we can provide more of a structure for mom and dad, make sure that they're not sleeping all day or taking naps all the time. Let's give them puzzles. Let's give them activities that stimulate their mind. Let's get them on social media. You know, let's look at YouTube. Let's, you know, there's all sorts of different Facebook groups for seniors for activities and music. And, you know, let's, let's, let's help them thrive and flourish at home. Well, wherever they are, but since this is an aging in place at home webinar, let's really help them have everything that they need to be able to thrive and be properly supported at home. Yeah. In terms of support, um, I know in our community, we have a very active senior center. We're also part of the age-friendly network of cities and towns that uh, that is sponsored okay. by AARP. And we also have a, a village here in the town where I live. Um, any thoughts about those kinds of um, outlets for uh, for older adults who are aging in place um, or aging in community? Yeah, we need like millions more of those. That's our challenge because I'm, I'm on a board here in Fort Myers because you know, it's great when you're, you know, everything is great when we can drive and move around and take ourselves to the bathroom. But when, when seniors start having more pain issues or shortness of breath, or they're afraid they're going to have an accident in their pants, they're like, I don't want to go out because they're afraid. Or what if I can't find a parking space close enough to the front door? I, I don't have enough energy to make it to the front door. So, so there's just not enough supports. And I'm on this board and seated in, um, Fort Myers, because there's these, there's these pockets, there's always going to be underserved people, right? But the underserved people are the ones that don't drive anymore or shouldn't, <laughs> um, that don't have the physical health to be able to get to these senior homes. So, or they don't have the transportation or they don't have the money to go, or they are too mentally impaired or memory impaired to be able to be like, oh, this is Tuesday. It's bingo day at the senior home. Right. So we just, we really need tons more of those villages and those senior support services so that these folks can stay at home. Yeah. Because what's happening is they're prematurely going into nursing homes because by the time fam the adult kids, that's why I do so many of these webinars literally every month because I'm trying to educate the adult kids because by the time the adult kids realize, Oh, mom and dad are really not doing well at home. They don't, they don't qualify for assisted living anymore. Now they only qualify to get into a nursing home. And then, and then mom and dad are miserable because they're like, well, what's this about? You know? Yeah. So it, it seems like it's a delicate balance. You, you mentioned that people often wait too long, but how do you prevent that from happening? Right. It's sort of like everything's fine until it isn't. <laughs> I, yes, I say that literally every day. That's why we do the aging planning, though. That's why that's why I educate them because informed consumers make smart decisions, and that and you know the goal is that we do this aging plan so that we have all this stuff ironed out, and that they stay on services where we can be their care advocate, their care coordinator, so that there's always eyes on them virtually, of course. But at least that's at least we're the professionals that know what we're looking for and what questions to ask of the healthcare providers or ask of mom and dad. Whereas if adult kids ask, did you fall? 
of course, mom and dad are going to say no, because they don't want to end up going to a care facility where they'll say, you know what, you know, yeah, I fell. And I'm like, okay, so what happened? Well, I tripped over my rug. Let's get over the, you know, let's get rid of the rug, <laughs> you know, so they're much more open with us than they are their own family. So, so we can help them stay at home longer, but of course that's all going to cost money. So it just depends on how you want your family relationships to go as your parents age and how do you as a family want to spend your time and your energy? Would you rather every time your head hits the pillow be like, oh, are mom and dad safe at home? Well, let's just let's put a plan together and make sure that there's enough supports coming in. Yeah, I've got one more quick question. But before I do, just a quick anecdote. Uh, for many years, my father was in St. Pete. I'm up in Boston. And I was playing the role of long distance caregiver. I had hired a geriatric care manager who, among other things, said that we have to remove all the throw rugs because they're a tripping hazard. And so we did all that. And then a month later, I went back and the, the throw rugs were back uh, where they exactly where they were when I <laughs> before the geriatric care manager came. And I asked uh, about the geriatric care manager and uh, they said that they had fired her because she had asked too many questions. Anyway, it's an uphill battle, um, which brings me to my last question. The toll that this takes caregiving on the unpaid caregiver in terms of perhaps, perhaps lost wages, lost Social Security contributions, um, uh, lost contributions to their retirement account, it's not insignificant. And, uh, and uh, Columbia University describes it as a $500 billion problem, uh, the notion of the toll it takes on unpaid caregivers. Uh, so any thoughts on that? Yeah, but let's break it down to like real life stuff. So my, because 500 billion is a lot. It's hard to like wrap your mind around that. But when you look at it from an individual family perspective, because I ask my clients, how much money have you spent out of pocket just in the last year doing all these rescue trips? Because if you're in Boston and mom and dad are in Tucson and dad's falling every month or mom's in the hospital every month, that airfare is not $69 on frontier. It's like a thousand dollars. So my typical families are spending each adult kid is spending around $15,000 just in airfare the year prior to hiring us to put an aging plan in place. I'm like, you know, for less than what you're spending in crisis airfare, you could have an aging plan. So again, how do you want to spend your time and your money? And this way you can at least get your life back on track. And that, like I said, that's just airfare. That's not like if you have to rent a rental car because you don't, mom and dad don't drive that, that doesn't include like hotel costs. Cause maybe you don't want to stay at mom and dad's house. Cause it now smells like a nursing home and you just want to stay at the hair, you know, the Hyatt. Um, and then that's not also including just time away from work where your boss or your colleagues are like, God, you have to go again. How long are you going to be gone this time? And, and they get tired of covering for you. Yeah. And, it, and it does jeopardize your career because if you're a realtor or in sales and you're not making your sales goals, that is jeopardizing your financial future. So that's why we talk about why it's so important. Every family has to have an aging plan if you want to be successful. Yeah. All right. Well, I've exhausted my questions for the moment. Uh, tell us about the other two webinars that we plan to do. Yep. So we're also going to do, we're doing, you're, we're looking at right now doing a three-part series. So we're also going to talk about the landscape of long-term care and what families really need to know, given the shortage of workers and the care facilities. So how to protect yourselves if you're the ones moving into care communities, but also how to advocate for your adult parents if they are moving into care communities and just what that really looks like with over, you know, how overwhelmed the, the healthcare model really is and, and how to safeguard yourselves or your loved ones from what often happens in care communities. And then we're also going to talk about just caregiving. You know, what does that look like? Are you a family caregiver? What What is a caregiver? And what's that caregiver snowball look like where caregiving starts out feeling like it's manageable? And then you realize, oh my gosh, now it's like a part-time job or it's affecting my marriage. And then why, why is an aging plan important? And how do we, how do we start those conversations as a family about the what wins of aging? Yeah. Well, I'll look forward to that. And uh, thank you for today. Um, sharing your knowledge and wisdom about this topic. It's so greatly needed and appreciated. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity, Bob.